Hi everyone and welcome. I'm so glad you could make it today. For this Good Soapy Morning, I wanted to talk a bit about additives. And what I have before you are 16 additives that I use quite often in my products. This is not all of them by any stretch. But this would just happen to be all the bowls that I had available right now. So these are what we're touching on. And I actually had to put these in order um, so that I could keep track because some look rather similar and could be confused easily. So I'm just going to go through each of them first and then we'll talk about what they are for or why you might want to use them either in your soaps, your lotions, your salves, your salts, your butters, all sorts of things, even in some of your um, bath bombs. And matter of fact, I'm getting ready to get into some bath bomb making myself. And uh, anyway, that brings up this particular subject and I wanted to go over with you. Here we have chamomile powder, which is simply ground chamomile flowers. It smells wonderful. It adds a wonderful calming and soothing effect to your soaps and to your creams, especially for folks that may have certain types of skin conditions. This can soothe and remove inflammation. Next we have neem powder, N-E-E-M. You've probably heard of neem oil, which I also have on hand. This is neem powder. These are the leaves that have been ground adds an absolutely beautiful green to soaps. Um, but in addition, it adds some other properties such as antibacterial properties. Uh, people have used it for acne soaps and such. Next we have one of my favorites, sandalwood powder. Sandalwood powder comes in several different varieties. Uh, varieties is the wrong word. Um, depending on who you get it from, I should say. It comes in several different colors uh, and strengths of scent. Um, it's hard to find a good supplier. I happen to have somebody that I'm very happy with and I get three different versions of this and they all cost different amounts and they look a bit different. But sandalwood is fantastic for making face masks for Creams, I love it for even the color that it puts in soaps um, and the scent. It goes wonderful with patchouli essential oil or even sandalwood essential oil. Uh, it boosts that. It's just fantastic. One of my favorite ingredients in so many different things is stinging nettle. Despite its name, it doesn't sting at all. It does in nature when it's fresh and it has the little needles on it, but once it's been dried, there's no more sting to it. And you can use it either like this in a ground leaf or in a powder. I have both. Um, I grow my own. You may grow your own or you may get it from a distributor. However you get it, make sure that you get it as fresh as you can because it does lose its potency uh, pretty quickly. But Stinging nettle is fantastic in tinctures. Uh, it has been used by herbalists for a very long time. As a matter of fact, I make my own neem uh, tincture. I'll show you just to give you a glance of what that looks like. You can see it's a very dark green. I take this several times a day um, as a home remedy. I'm not telling you to do that, but it's something I do. But it's fantastic in soaps for adding both uh, an exfoliant when ground, you know, ground down a bit uh, as a wonderful colorant in soap. It really does great infused in oils for colorant. Um, next we have uh, olive leaf powder, which is just what it sounds like. It is the leaf from the olive tree. So it's, I've used it many times in my olive oil shampoos, or, in, or excuse me, my olive oil soaps, my Castile soaps. I love to add olive leaf to it. It adds a fantastic color to it, and it gives a very mild exfoliation. Very mild indeed. It's a very, very fine powder. Next we have peppermint leaf. Okay, and I don't have to tell you too much about peppermint leaf. I, I'm sure you can 
guess what it does? It adds a fantastic fragrance to soap. Now, I will tell you this. Infuse it in an oil for a period of time or in a heat bath first uh, to extract the fragrance. If you just put this in your soap, you're gonna have a little fragrance where it's exposed on the outside of the soap, but it's not gonna be throughout the soap. But if you infuse this in an oil, you'll have a much better, it's a mild scent. It is not strong peppermint. You'd want to use maybe a peppermint or a spearmint essential oil, depending on what kind of leaf you're using, but it does add a great natural color and it's beautiful in soap. It doesn't turn brown like several other leaves do, so I really like it for that. This is a natto root, um, which you, I'm sure most of you may have used or seen used before. Adds a nice kind of a brick red uh, to your soaps, depending on how much you use. Next we have alkanet root. Um, can add a very nice purple color to your, your soap. Uh, I will tell you that that I've had some batches where it came out more lavender and purple and some where it came out different colors. <laughs> so it really depends on the batch that you order. Um, it is not always consistent. I'll just say that. Um, this green powder is wheatgrass powder, which is just, as it states, it's the grass, uh, wheatgrass that has been dried and ground into a powder. Makes a lovely colorant in soaps. Uh, and it's wonderful as a food additive as well. Um, just look up wheatgrass and health and you'll find all kinds of great information. This is pumice stone. We all know pumice stone, right? It's that rough stuff in lava soap and that some of us use in our exfoliating soaps. Wonderful, wonderful product. Um, I, I've used it in many a soap and never been dis, uh, disappointed with it. Uh, next we have tomato powder, which I've used in powders. It can give you anywhere, depending on how much you use, from a soft reddish pink to a medium red, a very low red. Nothing really bright, but I like it. It does make a nice color and it actually adds a nice, there is a mild fragrance that the tomato powder has. Um, I've made a couple of soaps with this and then I use herbal essential oils such as oregano, basil, sage, thyme. They go wonderful with this. Next I have black walnut powder and this is oftentimes, or no excuse me, this is the, this is the matter root, I apologize. Uh, this is matter root and I love matter root. Uh, it can add a real nice purple tone to your um, to your uh, soaps, <laughs> to your lotions. Uh, it really can vary. Sometimes you can end up with a brown color. Um, be very careful with it. It is, it, it can be tricky. One moment here, my phone was going dead on me. All right, thank you. Um, next here we have uh, This is the matter root. I'm sorry, you know what? I forgot to write this down. This was the black walnut powder. I apologize. This is the black walnut powder, which makes a very nice, fine exfoliant. You can see it's almost black, but it feels, it is a very, it's like a very, 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 very fine sand. Fantastic as an exfoliant in your soap. And will add a nice dark brown color too. So you want to be very careful with how much you add, depending on the color that you want. If you want a streak of brown through your soap, this is the trick. And it works, I like it better than using uh, any kind of micas or anything like that. I think it adds a much truer brown. This is the matter root powder. I apologize for, for the mix up there. This is the matter root. Uh, next we have uh, flaxseed powder. And flaxseed powder um, is another one great as an exfoliant. Um, you can get it in different grinds. This is a bit of a coarser grind. Um, so this is going to be somewhere between uh, a poppy seed and citrus, which we're going to get to in a moment, um, in a grind. So this is sort of a anywhere from a light to a medium exfoliant. Yellow dock powder. One of my favorites, and I make my own, but you can, again, this is something you can purchase online um, quite cheaply. 
Um, people use this both in tinctures and other kinds of herbal remedies, but in a soap, it adds a real nice mustardy color to your soap. Uh, again, depending on how much you use. By the way, each of these containers has one, one measured tablespoon. Every one of these are the exact same measurement. And I'll tell you why that's important in just a moment. But Yellow Dock uh, has some great beneficial properties. You may have to look those up online. As with any of these things, I suggest you do a little bit of research. This is my own uh, homemade citrus uh, rind and uh, zest that I make myself. This is this one's lemon actually. I have orange, I have grapefruit, and I have a combination of the three. Fantastic exfoliant. And not too rough, but it works very well. And for some people it is a little rough. So if you want a good garden soap, uh, so for instance, you know when your hands are really dirty or you've got grease on your hands like a mechanic or something, this, along with the pumice, is a fantastic exfoliant. All right, so that's for the that's the basic list here. Like I said, this is just some of the dozens and dozens that I have, but I thought this was a good basic start. And I decided as I was setting these up that I was going to do something. I'm and I've done something similar before. If you look at my garden green soap video, um, it's similar to what I'm about to do here, but this is even more uh, aggressive. <laughs> I'm going to make a soap and include all of these in one soap. Uh, it's going to be a bit of a challenge, but it's a challenge I'm up for. <laughs> and um, I think I will also blend this with several different essential oils, some herbal oils, some spice oils, um, and perhaps even some a uh, little bit of floral oil, uh, just to give this a real nice rounded uh, fragrance. It's going to be a challenge and I'm up for it and I love these kind of challenges. But anyway, so that's today's video. I just wanted to give you a brief introduction. Many of you have probably already used these products, but if you haven't, hopefully this gave you a little bit of information. There's certainly a lot more information online uh, and I suggest you look it up. Feel free to ask any questions you might have. Um, I just touched on a few of these things. I didn't go into great depth, um, but I just want to tell you again how much I appreciate you all. To all the new subscribers, welcome. And if you would, uh, click that notification bell so that you find out when I've uploaded a new video. And a thumbs up really wouldn't hurt either. I'd appreciate it. Leave a comment. Let me know what you think. If you like it, if you dislike it, let me know that too. I don't mind negative criticism. Sometimes we need that to know where we've strayed and where we need to move. So I'd appreciate that. So thanks again, everyone. Have a terrific day, and I'll see you again tomorrow. Goodbye. You know what? I forgot to mention something. <laughs> and I should have. A family member gave me this years ago when I was working on one of my concoctions. And she said, you're a real wizard. <laughs> and she gave me a magic wand. Uh, do I believe it's magic? No, nope. I think it's just beautiful. It's a lovely piece of wood. It has a crystal on each end. I think this is an amethyst crystal and this one's just a crystal crystal. I don't know much about crystals, but it's a lovely piece and um, I, it makes a good pointer. So that's all I'm using it for. Okay. Thanks again, everybody. Useless information. Goodbye.